Welcome to the video tutorial series on natural resources. This is a review video for a summit content assessment for middle school science. But if you are a student that's trying to learn about renewable and non-renewable energy sources, renewable and non-renewable material resources, and the uneven distribution of resources throughout the planet, this is the video for you. Now, I do have a different set of videos where I go over each of these things in more detail, but this is meant as a review video for someone that's really close to passing a test or just needs a little bit more information and in order to do so. So the first two objectives we'll cover together because they kind of uh, go hand in hand, which is what are the resources that we get from the land, the ocean, the atmosphere, and the bio biosphere, and uh, which ones of them are renewable or not renewable in the sense that they cannot be replenished in an amount of time that a you know human society needs it. So natural resources are anything that we get from our planet. We get water from the hydrosphere. We get lots of things from the biosphere, food, medicine, resources. Uh, there's a whole series of videos I did about ecological services provided by life. Then there's also uh, uh, the resources that are coming from the air, like oxygen and nitrogen gas that we use for all kinds of applications. We trap nitrogen for fertilizer. We obviously need oxygen to breathe. Plants need carbon dioxide from the air. And then there's also uh, geological resources, which are minerals, elements, chemicals that we get from the ground in order to do things like construction and, product, uh, and industry work and so forth, right? So let's talk about some of these resources and uh, how to use them. So the idea of sustainable use is the idea that we have to balance the needs of economic growth and stability and affordability of life and the things that we want to have to have luxury and having the ability to have security of energy with other needs, such as social needs and the way that people feel about how the resources are used, the well-being of people, because you don't want to be, uh, add toxins to the environment without thinking about how it's going to hurt people, uh, the ability of jobs for people and uh, and uh, well and the mental health needs of people. And you have to balance all of those needs with the wheels of the world, the environment, the quality of the water, the quality of the soil, the air quality, the greenhouse emissions, which are perhaps causing global uh, climate change, and the stability and biodiversity of life, which in itself feeds into the other ones, because uh, the stability of, of the economy and the health being of people does depend on the stability of the ecosystem as well, even though people tend to forget about that because it's not an immediate effect. They want the immediate gratification and forget that in the future, uh, economy and the health being of people will be compromised if we don't forget, if you forget completely about the world. So we have to use it in a way that we save it for tomorrow. And the secret to do that is to reduce as much as possible, try to not do things which are not necessary and which are really truly luxuries, and then reuse things as much as possible before throwing them away. And if you must throw it away, if it's possible, that it can be recycled to do so as well. Now, the different types of resources matter for this. non renewable resources are those which are finite as, as far as they, they will take too long for them to be renewed within a human lifetime. It can take millions of years for that to happen. Right. And then fossil fuels is an example of that. It can be renewed because, of course, it was made in the first place, but it takes millions of years for that to happen. So it's not going to happen over a, uh, a human lifetime. So then there's also renewable resources, which are those that can be replenished, but it can take time to replenish. And so if we're not careful, we can use them up like water. Right. As an example of that. And we are having some places of the earth that have more scarcity uh, because of that. And then we have inexhaustible resources, which can use as much as we want, and we're never going to run out anytime soon, uh, which is things like solar energy, wind power, geothermal power, tidal power are examples of that. Do remember, your renewable resources sound that they can just come back, but it can take some time to do so. It may not renew within a human lifetime if we use too much of it. Now, here's some examples of physical material resources uh, that we actually use. We use the groundwater primarily for agriculture. But we also use it for building and industrial stuff. We also use it for sewage and then a little bit less for that for hygiene and even less for drinking. The primary uh, footprint of water use comes from actually growing our food. Then we have non-renewable metal ores, which once mined can run out. And that's why it's so important to reduce and recycle. And we use that kind for all kinds of things like steel, uh, cans, aluminum foil, electrical circuits, transportation vehicles, construction. Uh, and we also use the same kind of thing for minerals and rocks and elements, uh, chemicals, which we use for decoration, like marble, and others that we use for chemical applications and construction. Petroleum is another non-renewable resource. Source, we use it to make plastic, we use it to make energy in power plants, and we use it to make gas for our cars. But it's running out, and it's uh, not going to last forever. Less than two centuries is what we think is left at the current rate of consumption. 
but the consumption is increasing, so it might be less than that. Wood, uh, it's just renewable as long as you can plant more trees, you can have more wood, and we use that for, for heat, for paper, for construction purposes. Uh, we also use it for uh, oxygen from the air, and that's completely renewable because life continues to be photosynthesis and renewing that resource. The soil is also renewable, although it takes a very long time to renew it, so we have to be very careful the way we use soil so we don't uh, uh, end up depleting it too fast because it takes a long time for processes such as erosion, deposition, and a nutrient cycling by decomposers to re-enrich the soil. And fertilizers are not the answer because you're still going to get the nutrients from somewhere else and you're going to mine them. It causes another series of problems, and some of them it's hard to find, like phosphorus. So uh, you got to make sure to use the soil wisely. You got sunlight, which is inexhaustible, powers life, it powers solar power and you know climate and weather all throughout the planet, but it is an unevenly distributed resource, which we'll talk about later. And we have plants and animals, which, which we use for all kinds of things. There's a different series that we talk about uh, ecosystems, uh, resources, and services uh, that's called the Humans and Biodiversity Series. And there I talk at length about the different ways in which the ecosystem help us. Uh, but food, clothing fibers, recreation, uh, medicine are all things that we use. Uh, shelter, um, uh, clothing are all things that we use for this. Uh, the second part of this is this idea of energy sources. Uh, more so than material sources, and there's a lot of different types of it. And in another video, I go over it in detail, and I'm not going to do that over here. I'm going to really glance over it. But essentially, the key for the test is that you have to know how they work. So solar power is capturing my solar panels for heat and electricity purposes. Um, and then you have wind power, which is also inexhaustible uh, because it's powered by weather, which is powered by the sun. And that's when wind turbines are spun by the wind and then connect the generators to make electricity. Uh, there's not a lot of calls, pros and cons in a test, though, uh, but I did talk about that in my other video because I wanted you to understand, and it's important to, to learn about these things because we make decisions that could affect the future of the human race. And so I think it's my job as a science teacher to talk about that. But in this review video, since I'm focusing on what you need for the test, I'm not really going to talk about the pros and cons. You can pause and look at them if you want. Uh, there's tidal power, which is using the uh, turbines to capture the flow of the water uh, because of waves or tides. Also inexhaustible since it's caused by Earth uh, systems uh, uh, energy. There's geothermal power, which also should say inexhaustible here, which is the heat of the ground itself, uh, especially near places that have volcanic activity, but even just the heat that the Earth absorbs from the sun can, and the pressure of the layers above it can actually cause, uh, uh, for, be used and captured to heat up homes and even perhaps boil water to make a wind turbine uh, move around and uh not a wind turbine, a steam turbine, move around, connect to a generator, and thus produce electricity. Uh, then we, the problem with geothermal power uh, is that it's uh, it's better in places that have volcanoes. And so uh, not a lot of people can actually do this, but for heating homes is a good solution. We have hydroelectric power, which is uses dams to, to uh, block the water flow in an area that has uh, rivers with a lot of profile. And then what you do is the store potential runs through a opening on the dam where a turbine will get spun by the water flow and connects to a generator to produce electricity. And that's another really uh, cool uh, renewable energy source. Now, it's renewable, not inexhaustible like the other ones were, because water could run out. It could dry. It could have droughts. And so uh, it's important to uh, use it wisely. Biofuels is another renewable energy source that's not inexhaustible, but as long as you can plant, you can use it. And basically, you use crops or kelp, uh, which are kind of like an algae, to process uh, for diesel and alcohol production, which can then be burned for energy um, and uh, gas and stuff like that. And uh, wood can also be considered a biofuel, although that's usually used primarily for home heat. We have coal power, and that's a, a, a mineral or kind of rock kind of thing that's found in a, a ground. And you can uh, mine it and then burn it uh, to make water boil. Goes through a steam turbine to conduct, conducts to a generator and uh, produce electricity. As you can see, steam steam uh, boilers are huge in electricity production. A lot of the power power uh, is produced that way. Uh, but anyways, it's very abundant. It is a really cool energy source. It's just as a lot of steam because it does produce carbon emissions and other. Uh, toxins if it's not cleaned properly uh, and filtered as products pr produced. Other types of fossil fuels include petroleum, which is a little uh, uh, cleaner than and easier to do than uh, coal, but coal is cheaper. 
and oil is going to run out. There's a lot of coal left, uh, but not a lot of oil left. But you can also burn oil for, to make water boil, pass through a turbine, and cause the generation of energy that way. Uh, then you have nuclear power, which also uses a steam turbine, except that the water is boiled with the energy that from a decay uh, of a controlled chain reaction of a radioactive isotope of uranium. And uh, that produces some radioactive waste, but that can be taken care of, uh, of and stored away. And as long as it's safely operated and does no accidents, it's probably the best of all the non renewable energy sources because it produces no emissions. And it's actually relatively safer than the other ones. So although people worry about more nuclear power plant, it actually has had way less accidents and damage to the environment than uh, the other two had that we talked about. In fact, the mining and transportation process of coal and oil and natural gas uh, cause a lot more damage than the nuclear power ever has. So, uh, And then you also still have the burning of fossil fuels that create greenhouse gases and then global warming, which is going to cause a lot more other problems. So uh, shifting towards nuclear, if you must go down renewable, might be the way to go. The last uh, fossil fuel I want to talk about is natural gas. And it's the one that basically uh, you, you can mine it from the ground, usually near petroleum deposits or right above it. And uh, you use it to heat homes or to uh, boil water to put through a steam turbine to make electricity through a generator. And it's very, very efficient, very, very low cost, very cleaner than the other two types of, of fossil fuels. So uh, if you must go fossil fuels, perhaps is the way to go. And a lot of people use this uh, to actually heat up their houses too. The last objective uh, was about the reason why resources are unevenly distributed throughout the planet. And the main reason for that is that uh, geology is unique. So each area of the world has a unique geological history. And because of that, it will have unique minerals and unique processes that cause over time things to happen. So for example, oil is only going to be around in areas that used to be uh, under shallow seas full of algae, right? And so uh, places like uh, Saudi Arabia and the coast of Brazil and the coast of, uh, of um, Venezuela and Alaska and Siberia, which are, a lot of the oil depositors are left are in, are all places that used to be rich in that and used to be uh, shallow oceans. Rocks and minerals are also going to be unique. Like, so you can't mine, find gold everywhere. You can't find silver everywhere. It depends on where those minerals deposited during the geological process of formation of the Earth. Coal, uh, a long time ago in the Carboniferous period, the Earth has to be covered with fern, forests, and swamps. And so most of the planet uh, used to be like that. And so a lot of the Earth, can, can you can find coal. So it's really abundant. Um, and, but basically, it's coming from places that used to be under massive swamps, which, like I said, most of the Earth world used to be under. So you can find coal in a lot of places. And so there's a lot more left than there is oil because of that. But only places that have swamps, uh, or used to be have swamps, uh, will have coal. Now, soil is another resource that, believe it or not, isn't distributed evenly throughout the world because uh, it depends on the biological processes like decomposition, which depend on temperature and other availability of, of resources, and also erosion and deposition, which depend on weather. And so this weather is not the same everywhere, and life isn't the same everywhere. Soil isn't the same everywhere. Because soil is intrinsically connected to life. But we use soil to be uh, agriculture, and then we cut the plants and sell them somewhere else, right? So when you're eating a strawberry, you're eating a nutrient that used to be in the soil of the farmer a long time ago. But now that nutrient left with it, with the strawberry, and now it's on you. And so because of that, the soil gets depleted over time. So that's important to rotate crops so that there are some crops that put in the soil uh, nutrients that others take. And so if you rotate crops, you can keep the health of the soil a little bit better and you allow the crops to re refuse to rest over time too to allow the regeneration of those nutrients. And that can help you also avoid the use of fertilizer, which can cause runoff problems and damage to aquatic, aquatic ecosystems. So, But it is uh, another resource that's unevenly distributed. That's not, there's places on the earth that don't have the richness that others do. Sunlight even, an inexhaustible resource that we have plenty of, it is unevenly distributed though. Uh, if you live in the poles, for six months you will have light, but six months you will have darkness. If you live in the tropics, it will be warm all throughout the year. And, if, and of course, there's seasons. So different times of the year, there's more light than others in different places. And so that is going to cause differences in uh, availability of resources and production of ecosystems throughout the world because of changes in the amount of sunlight due to the fact that the Earth is tilted. And as it rotates around the sun, the part that faces it directly changes throughout the year. 
Wood also changes the different places because it requires different amount of sunlight and precipitation and availability of nutrients. So not everywhere in the world we have forests. A lot of places you have grasslands or deserts because it can't support the trees. And so uh, you're not going to be able to make wood everywhere. Water, too, uh, uh, not everywhere gets the same amount of precipitation because the climate and weather is different in different places. And then also, due to the fact that the geology is different, the ability of the ground to retain the water or let the water through it. So rocks start to have different amount of – some are more porous than others. Some actually have cavities underneath them that allow the water to form uh, underground uh, storage supplies. Others uh, allow water to flow through it easily and, uh, and basically break to it and have underground rivers. And others don't really seep too well. So it all depends on the local geology. And so that is also going to affect the availability of water. And some of the places that have the most scarcity, sadly, are the places where the population has been growing the most. And so that is something that uh, we have to worry about as the next decade unfolds. Last but not least is this idea that because geological and biological processes are unique in each area of the world, uh, across the space and time, because shifts in, in, in climate and shifts in continental position uh, because of continental drift and shifts in the way the processes are happening in the geological history of each place, uh, even throughout time, those resources will change. And so because of that, the availability of minerals, rocks, fossil fuels, water, all these things we've been talking about is not the same throughout the planet. Forcing trade between countries uh, in order to secure the things people need in order to maintain the quality of life that we've gotten used to in modern human society. All right. And so that is it for natural resources. I hope you found this helpful and uh, you uh, can do well on the test. And I hope you don't do uh, anything that would not make your mama proud. I'll see you next time.